Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Fulham. Now then, <sighs> rebuilding was never going to be easy, but I did not anticipate it was going to be quite as difficult as this. Now, as you can see from our next fixture, we're playing Charlton. Uh, I decided to stop at the end of September, just before then, because our first game against uh, of the next month is on the very first day, and I didn't want to get caught up in all the pre-match stuff before we did this episode. So I'm just going to run you through. We didn't have many fixtures in September anyway, but as you can see, things did not go well. Not not well at all. I, I was kind of hoping that we could pick ourselves back up after the poor results as of late, and I was assuming that we had done. The 1-1 one -one draw at Rotherham wasn't great, but I figured away at Brentford, it's a local derby, we can pick ourselves up and get going. Unfortunately, that was not exactly what happened in the game. Now, it was a strange one because, as you can see from the stats again, there was not a lot of shots on target. We clearly took pot shots from just about everyone on the pitch, and this is despite me not having the shoot on sight instruction. They just cannot seem to stop shooting, and it's good to get a lot of shots, but we need to be more accurate with the shots. I think if we can get more accurate, then we can seriously start scoring a lot of goals. Now, this was a strange one because Nick Proschwitz just seemed to lose our defenders at every available opportunity. And as you can see, in the first 30 minutes, he was able to score two goals for Brentford, which basically put the game beyond us. I did try to push forward. And as you can see, we got a goal back in first half stoppage time through Brian Ruiz, finally. Um, but unfortunately, things went from bad to worse. And in the second half, Morbietta got himself sent off. And that was pretty much it for us. And it hurt because it moved us further down the table. And you start getting all the stuff in the press about, oh, he's going to get the sack. But I kind of wanted to move past that. Unfortunately, we moved past that straight into another defeat. And this one had even worse repercussions for us. Because it was at home and it was against Middlesbrough, who were right down the bottom with us at this point in the table. And within five minutes, we were already behind through Adam Clayton who then set up Grant Lidbetter for the second goal and left us 2-0 down after 35 minutes, just like we were against Brentford. Not exactly how I anticipated this game would go. We did get a goal back very soon after through Ross McCormack, which was great because that was his first goal for us this season, I think. And it's been a long time coming, frankly. Unfortunately, in the second half, Mustafa Cario put them back 3-1 ahead and I kind of just assumed we were going to be dead in the water. However, three minutes later, Brian Ruiz, another goal for him. Brilliant stuff put us 3-2 back in the game. I thought maybe we could get something about this, put a nice attacking style to the game at that point. And then Brian Ruiz on 77 minutes pulls his hamstring. In fact, no, not pulls his hamstring, tore his hamstring. And the prognosis was two to three months on the sidelines. So that's just brilliant. The best player on the team is now out and will be until at least the early part of next year. And as you can see, once again, we dominated the stats and still managed to lose. This is something that had to change. And thankfully, somehow, it did. In our next home game, we came up against Blackburn Rovers. Now, at the time, Blackburn Rovers were top of the league and flying. They'd won all but one of their games, I think. And as you can see from the stats, we did not dominate this game. We were very, very poor. We could not keep the ball. Uh, despite our possession being 52-48, to 48, we couldn't keep the ball. Most of this was from second-half play when I changed the tactics up slightly. In fact, I believe at halftime we had one shot and none on target, and they had most of these already. So it was a tough one for us. But Rodiego got a pretty scrappy goal from what I remember, and we were able to hold on. I just parked the bus at that point, determined to get three points because the vultures were circling for my head at that point, and I did not want to lose my job at this point in the series. I was hoping we could kick on from that. Unfortunately, the kicking was given to us. We got our asses handed to us by Nottingham Forest, who who had replaced Blackburn at the top of the league at this point and showed why they were at the top of the league. They destroyed us. 19 shots, 13 on target. We still dominate possession, but that counted for nothing in this game. We actually played slightly better than we did against Blackburn, except at the back where we were t completely woeful. Um, and clearly things were not going well. We had injuries, although our back four is still relatively solid. And Morbietta was back by this point, partnered with Dan Pern, Marco Motta and Julesgaard. Julesgaard has been getting slated by the fans up to this point. And as you can see, ratings like 5.6 kind of indicate why. So it was nice to see Ross, uh, not Ross, nice to see Marcelo Trotter get on the score sheet, if nothing else. But it was a terrible day and one to forget. And I think, as you can see here, that has left us 21st in the championship 
and that's a position nobody wants to be in let's just have a little look we are literally a point off the relegation zone and only and that's even because Birmingham Rotherham and Watford all have a game in hand on us we could conceivably be bottom after this weekend and I will be in some serious trouble I haven't had the board complaining at me yet which is surprising considering how badly we're doing we've only won two games out of our first nine and yet they're not on my back which is strange but I imagine if we carry on like this we'll be done for now I wanted to just take some time just to show you the stats for the players so far so as you can see the only player that's actually played most of the games is Adil Sheehy Um, he has picked up a couple of assists for us but that's about it um Looking at goals-wise, as you can see, Roddy Ager's actually got three, despite the fact he can't put the ball in the net. He has actually been our top scorer, and that is clearly evidence of the problems we have at the moment. If Hugo Roddy Ager is our top scorer, we're not even playing him up front at the moment. He's getting played out wide because Ross McCormack's a better finisher. Although, he has only got one goal for us in nine games, so maybe he isn't the better finisher, or he just hasn't been able to take the chances. Pass percentage-wise... As you can see, players like Scott Parker and McDonald Moriga are doing a decent amount of passing in that midfield, especially when they are both playing that same kind of similar role. 82% passing accuracy is very, very decent. As for our average ratings, the best average rating player that's played a decent number of games, Dan Burns has been okay, but really 6.82 is not a spectacular appearance average rating. Sean Hutchinson's probably been one of the more consistent players. 7.05, he's only played four games, but they have all been as starting roles, and... He's been in decent form when he has played. He just keeps picking up little niggling injuries and I can never quite get him fit enough to actually start many games. So that's a shame. Um, hopefully we can pick things up in the next few episodes. I would like to start doing some live com games. I've been running some tests on the computer and frankly, it just isn't powerful enough to do it. It goes all stuttery and the quality of the video drops and I don't want to put out poor quality videos. Um... Which is why, as you can probably tell, the mic quality and the audio quality has improved a lot since the first couple of videos went out. That's because I was disgusted upon hearing it and decided that we needed to do something about that. And hopefully I have done, um, just by tweaking a few settings with the mic. Um, I have seen that some people have actually watched those videos, which is brilliant, considering such a small channel with essentially no viewership. But it's great to see that some people have actually watched those. So thank you. And I hope you enjoy the next videos that I've got to come, and including this one. So if you like it, give it a like so I know that people are actually watching this stuff and want to see more of it um we'll be back really soon with episode four hopefully we will pick up some pace with the league and get ourselves back up the table fingers crossed until next time bye bye